Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I share lessons I learn in poker that apply to life and business. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. More awesome content is coming your way. Produce new videos every week. In this video, I'd like to share some my thought process in decision making. This is comes from my background in poker where I'm always very analytical about the decisions I make because I have to be. And you have to analyze even the micro decisions. Like, in poker, it's even the small pots you play are important because you accumulate chips that you need to leverage later to win the big pots. I like to focus on decision making a lot in the real world as well because I think it has important implications. Like every decision, every hand in poker you play has a way that is more optimal to play than another way. It might be a small hand, it might only net you $5 or one unit but it's still better to play it in a positive way than a not positive way, right? And insofar that that's true, I find in life these things are also the same. I made a video about something similar called why you should take the stairs instead of the elevator. And it's like, there's a conundrum. Should you take the stairs or the elevator? What should you, or the escalator? Like, what should you do, right? And why? And I explore that in that video. But in this video, I'd like to explore ordering sizes. Another thing that is seemingly trivial that we don't think about. But my point is that we should think about these decisions that we're making because we make them so frequently. So the micro decisions you make in life accumulate to become your macro. So extrapolated over a long period of time, those small hands of poker you play add up to a lot of money. And just in the same vein, the micro decision every day to go to the gym leads you to have a life of health. So micro decisions are important because they shape the very nature of our lives. And so whether or not to order a small size or a big size is a micro decision, but we make it every time we go out to the store. When you go to buy a smoothie or an ice cream or a cookie or whatever it is, there's always different sizes usually. Cookie's not the best example, but there's always different sizes of everything you could order. Also, another thing is like length of time you should get something. So let's say you're gonna go to a spa and get a massage. Do you get a, an hour or an hour and a half, right? Like there's always that small versus large size. There's this example exists in a lot of places in life. I've put a lot of thought into this because it's a micro decision that I find myself making all the time. The tipping point for me was going to get a gelato. I was in Italy and I went to go get a gelato. And of course they say, you know, what size do you want? And so I'm sitting there and then finally I was like, I was kind of really just, it was one of those days where I was just actually present. It happens not that often. Usually I'm thinking about something else or maybe I'm on my phone or I'm distracted. I was like, what size do I want? Do I want a small or a large or medium? I was like, wow. So I was thinking about what size to order. And I was like, this is kind of a tough question. Like what variable, first of all, to solve this situation, you have to know what variable you're optimizing for. Like, do you want to save money? Then it's easy, short or small. Do you want to ingest less calories for whatever you're easing? You should order small. And then, but I realized those really generally aren't the two things that I'm trying to optimize for. Like if I wanted to ingest less calories, I probably just wouldn't get the item in the, in the to begin with. I'm kind of binary in that way. I mean, they're gonna, enjoy it or not. So this didn't really lead me to be super compelled to make a decision. And usually when people go out to buy something, like the difference between a small and a large is not usually, price is not usually the metric to which people use to make their decisions. So I was thinking about like, what is the way that I should make this decision? What's the highest utility way to think about this? And I realized that I'm what I'm trying to optimize for when I'm going out to indulge in, in getting something. Because usually when you're ordering a size of something, it's usually an indulgence, it's a pleasure. It's something that you want to enjoy, right? It's not something that's in your everyday life, typically. So I realized that the metric to which I'm trying to optimize for is enjoyment. And I'm, I'm a really like value-based type of thinker. So I'm not, like for example, if something costs $4 that should cost $2, even if I could afford the difference in absolute value, I it bothers me to buy it because I feel like I'm overpaying for something that doesn't, I'm not paying, I'm not getting the value of the item. But it's, 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 it's a game to me. It's not about the fact that I could spend $4 instead of two, sure. But it's about the fact that I'm paying 100% markup for something that shouldn't cost that much money. So in the same vein, when I order a gelato, what I'm trying to do is make every bite have the most impact. I want every bite to have the maximum amount of value. And I noticed that there's a significant factor of diminishing marginal return with each bite I take. So what does that mean? The first bite, I have my enjoyment, if I measure it on a scale of one to 10, is a 10, right? It's, it's the maximum pleasure you can have probably is eating gelato in Italy. It's a pretty, it's like a 10, pretty good. Then I think like, okay, the second bite is close to a 10. The third bite is like a nine and a half. The fourth bite 
is a nine and then an eight and then you go down to like six five and then you just plateau so like halfway through the gelato when i ordered i ordered a large this time that i went there so halfway through the gelato i had two scoops got a large i, was, I went all in I realized that the difference between my enjoyment in the first scoop and the second scoop was basically negligible. I was just kind of eating on auto autopilot. My enjoyment had just went down like this and just flatlined at a five. And I was just staying there. Like, or maybe my enjoyment was a seven or whatever it was, but it flatlined. So it, it had diminishing utility. With each bite I took, I was enjoying the next bite less and less. And then it just kind of leveled off where I was like, wasn't getting any value from eating the gelato. I was just kind of eating it because I had it. I would have been as sated if I just ordered a small and ate the first five, six, seven, ten bites, and that would have brought me 80% of the enjoyment of eating the entire thing, 90% of the enjoyment maybe. So there's this phenomenon called the 80-20 principle, which 80% of the outputs come from 20% of the inputs. A practical example that applies to life is you wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. You notice in my videos, I always wear this shirt. This is part of my 20% wardrobe. So 80% of the profits from your business come from 20% of the customers and so on. So I find that this is true in life. 80% of my enjoyment from that gelato comes from the first 20% of eating. So then what am I doing? I'm basically saying I'm gonna eat the next 80% of this gelato for a mere 20% of the enjoyment. That's just not a good return on my investment. I would be much better off having 20% of the gelato or 20% of the size and then waiting and having another one later and doing that 20% again. Cause I could get two smalls for the price of a large, but you're getting disproportionate more enjoyment having two smalls over a period of time where there's, they're intermittent. There's a space in between because then you're getting that 80% of the joy again, because when you go without something for a while, it becomes that 10 level enjoyment again. When is when you eat it and you keep eating it, the enjoyment just diminishes. So this is a phenomenon I found works pretty well with a lot of things. And when you optimize for pretty much any variable, ordering a small makes the most sense. You save more money because you're ordering the cheapest size. You ingest less calories because you're ordering the small. And also you get the most amount of value for your enjoyment. I hope you took something from this video. What size do you order? Leave your thoughts in a comment below. Subscribe to my channel because more awesome content is coming. I'll see you in the next one.